the European approval by the European Medical Agency um, was announced on uh, November 24th, um, 2016, and Nilaro has been approved for treatment of all patients who relapse after a frontline therapy. So it's a relatively wide uh, indication, I mean the widest indication you can think about, because all patients who have who relapse after frontline therapy uh, can be treated with Nilaro. So Ixazomib is the uh, first oral proteasome inhibitor uh, to be introduced in the clinic. It has been studied in a variety of different combinations as well as a single agent. It was approved in the U.S. for treatment of relapsed myeloma with one to three prior lines of therapy uh, based on data from a large phase three trial where Ixazomib was combined with leneldomide and dexamethasone. So the combination of Ixazomib, leneldomide and dexamethasone was compared to leneldomide and dexamethasone in patients with relapsed myeloma who are not refractory to bortezomib and who have had uh, one to three prior lines of um, uh, therapy. What was seen in this phase three trial was that there was about a six month improvement in the progression free survival when ixazomib was added to leneldomide and dexamethasone. There was no significant increase in the toxicity that was seen with the triplet compared to the doublet of leneldomide and dexamethasone. So the trial told us two things. One, it's, it, the addition of ixazomib uh, increases the efficacy of the combination and improves the progression free survival, increases the depth of response. It also um, did, told us that the third drug can be added to lenalidomide dexamethasone without any significant uh, change in the toxicity profile. And finally, these patients could continue on therapy for a prolonged period of time uh, with this combination, again, um, suggesting the um, favorable toxicity profile of the combination. The quality of the response uh, is uh, really relevant in myeloma. And we know that the best, the quality of the response, the longest of the progression free survival. However, the kinetic of the response has not been evaluated in depth in the large phase three randomized trials conducted in relapse and refractory myeloma. In the Tourmalin MM1 study, this concept has been evaluated. And we know that patients included in this trial responded very rapidly and the median time to first response was of approximately one month, and the median time to best response was 2.3, 2.6 months. However, there were a significant, as a group of patients, approximately 25, 30% of the patients that achieved the best quality of the response beyond the cycle number six. And these patients who achieved this quality of the response beyond the cycle number six had a significantly longer progression free survival in comparison with patients in which the best response was achieved earlier. This means that the duration of the treatment is important because if we are able to maintain to the patients on therapy for a prolonged period of time, they can achieve the responses, better responses, they can improve the quality of the response and this is going to be associated with a significantly longer outcome. One of the advantages of proteasome inhibitors in patients with myeloma with renal insufficiency is that um, we don't really have to do make much of dose modifications as we have learned with the bortezomib experience. In, pa in patients getting exazomib, our experience so far has been that the same thing holds true. Uh, patients can receive exasmib um, without dose modification in patients with uh, um, mild to moderate renal uh, insufficiency um, without ex having any uh, difference in the toxicity profile. Uh, in patients with mild hepatic impairment, there is again no significant dose modifications are needed uh, for use of uh, exasmib. Again, the what drug it gets combined with in these different settings uh, depends on uh, the the metabolic profile of that particular drug, whether it's lenaldomide, which we, we, we dose modify in the setting of renal failure, or cyclophosphamide, which does not need any modification in the setting of renal failure. So the good thing of having so many different drugs is we can actually um, choose a partner drug for exazomib based on the particular clinical setting. The SEMIC 
is a protein involved in many functions of the cells. And uh, we know that uh, there is a relationship between uh, proteasome inhibitor sensitivity and CEMIX. And in fact, uh, we know that uh, CEMIX is uh, usually overexpressed in uh, poor risk patients. In addition, the presence of uh, abnormalities, genetic abnormalities like uh, deletion 17, deletion 17P, or 414 translocation are also associated with poor prognosis. In the Tourmaline MM1 study, some subanalyses were done according to the expression of CEMIC and also according to the presence of high-risk cytogenetic abnormalities. Starting by the role of ixazomib, lenalidomide and dexamethasone in high-risk cytogenetic abnormalities to group of patients, I have to say that IRD is able to completely overcome the poor prognosis of the presence of 414 or deletion 17. Why? Because the median progression-free survival was exactly the same in the whole series of patients in standard risk patients than in high risk patients. And in addition, a sub-analysis was done according to the percentage of positive plasma cells for deletion 17P. And the percentage of abnormal plasma cells doesn't matter into the efficacy of IRD in this specific subgroup of patients. So the conclusion would be that uh, ixazomib in combination with lenalidomide and dexamethasone represents an optimal choice for this high-risk subgroup of patients. In addition, if we evaluated the role of CEMIC, the sub-analysis showed that uh, patients with uh, high levels of CEMIC responded very well to ixazomib in combination with lenalidomide and dexamethasone. Which patients had high levels of CEMIX? Patients that had been included in the trial after two or three prior lines of therapy. And in addition, if we focus on the group of patients including after just one prior line of therapy, patients non-transplant candidate had high levels of CEMIC and they responded very well to IRD. By contrast, probably I would not choose IRD for patients receiving just one prior line of therapy, including autologous stem cell transplantation, because probably autologous stem cell transplantation induces more immature plasma cells, resulting in low levels of CEMIC, and this can explain the low effect efficacy of this combination in this group of patients.